Yeah, the morning of September 11th, I was at the Saginaw Chippewa Tribal College, and one of the secretaries happened to have the um, TV on, and we watched the, uh, uh, I think it was the South Tower go down first. Um, it was particularly poignant to me because I had been on top of the uh, World Trade Center on July 4th with my entire immediate family and uh, two children from uh, two other families, and when we had read that uh, Muhammad Atta uh, had his luggage lost between Portland, Maine and Boston, Massachusetts, and when it was recovered, uh, they discovered that the original planning was for July 4th, being the nation's, you know, founding holiday. It, it really did give us pause. Well, I started discussing it with a number of people at the Tribal College, and uh, it wasn't immediately clear that it was a group from, uh, you know, Al it was Al-Qaeda, that it was a, a, a associated uh, um, a Muslim uh, so-called fundamentalists. And so we were just pretty much discussing other possibilities uh, of uh, other, you know, uh, similar groups that might have, uh, might have done that. I talked to my son later, uh, and he was actually in class with one of the other, uh, you know, uh, children that I mentioned uh, from another family, and, and they said they had actually watched it in class and remembered being on top of the World Trade Center July 4th, uh, and just it just had this enormous, overwhelming impact on them. Uh, you know, being younger, I think it did too. They hadn't experienced a lot of things like that, and having actually been there, uh, it, it had, you know, just an enormous... Uh, uh, impact on them. Uh, I think people were very tense. I don't remember any sort of panic or, or panic buying or anything like that. Uh, just very tense, very, very concerned, uh, of really feeling for all of the families that were involved. And I think at that point, uh, the, f the third plane was still unaccounted for, so the one that crashed south of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. And uh, so there was a lot of concern there, you know, was the, after the Pentagon was hit, was there another plane possibly headed for the White House or for uh, the Capitol building? No. Uh, the travel college at that point, I think I was teaching a uh, travel law class. Okay. Okay. Political okay. science, yeah. yeah political political, science. I'm in the political science department. Okay. A absolutely. Uh, there, are, there are those in the executive branch, so I think they're in the minority, who would like Americans to give up the First Amendment or parts of the First Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, and the Eighth Amendment. And I think that uh, just the opposite, we should be even more vigilant uh, about our civil liberties, about freedom of speech, uh, freedom of association, freedom from uh, illegal search and seizure, freedom from cruel and unusual punishment. Uh, those that advocate that forget that, uh, you know, I think most of the uh, officer class and the generals uh, say that ultimately this is a battle for hearts and minds. It, it, there really is no ultimate military solution. And so that uh, we should be more vigilant about those uh, very important uh, constitutional rights, you know, that Americans have been fighting and dying for for, for over 200 years. Uh, I am particularly concerned about the Fourth Amendment violations, the search and seizure of uh, emails, phone calls, uh, text messages uh, that c clearly is unconstitutional and has been carried out purely on the signature of the president. Uh, this is, uh, I think, unpatriotic, uh, and I think that Americans should be very, very concerned about that. And, and the holding of American citizens purely uh, on the word of the president without any access to uh, attorneys or, or check and balance from the judicial branch. I think Americans should be uh, very, very concerned about that. Well, uh, from purely a subjective standpoint, absolutely. Uh, this morning I asked uh, a class of over 100 students if they had watched the debate last night, some of which did deal with, with civil liberties. Uh, only four students raised their hand. I mean, the, the, the group that was debating could potentially produce the next president of the United States. Uh, so we should, you know, clearly understand what they believe vis-a-vis -vis the, the Bill of Rights. Uh, so I, I, have, I have a lot of concern about that. James Madison said that uh, we'll, we will lose our democracy from within, not from without. And so uh, when, when students uh, in particular who are supposed to be 
the most aware on many of these issues don't seem to uh, be concerned at all, then I'm, I'm particularly concerned. Absolutely wide, widespread data mining by the National Security Agency, uh, I think torture by the CIA, um, clearly illegal, uh, clearly in violation of all the treaties that we signed, the Geneva Accords, the, ban the Treaty Against Torture, uh, John McCain's um, uh, bill in the United States uh, Senate, 90 to 9, against torture. Uh, Americans should be very, very concerned about that. And it's also ob obviously a violation of the Eighth Amendment ban against cruel and unusual punishment. And I think most people, if they reflect on it, realize that it, it doesn't really uh, advance our um, causes in the world. It, it really, uh, you know, uh, hamstrings them as far as the, the ability of, uh, of our troops to be successful. And, um, you know, when, when John McCain was holding those hearings uh, about the ban on torture, uh, general after general after general testify that it's, uh, number one, illegal, number two, obviously extremely bad for morale. You often hear people say, well, sure, these people should be tortured. We'll let them do it. It's, it's not something that the United States military or the CIA should be involved in. I think that Americans should be uh, more aware of foreign policy. They should be more aware of what their government is doing in the world. Uh, they should understand exactly why uh, these um, uh, radicals, or however you want to describe them, I, I, I don't, the vast majority of the Muslim world does not even accept them as, as Muslims. So, uh, you know, but, but Americans should be much more aware of, of foreign policy being the most uh, powerful military in the world. And tragically, that's not the case. Uh, so, um, uh, we should understand that um, we do have enemies out there. Uh, we should know uh, what their actual um, agenda is. Uh, and, you know, time and time again, uh, generals have said this is a battle for hearts and minds. And uh, if we don't understand uh, why these people hate us so much, then we'll, we will never be able to defeat them. Uh, you know, it, it, has, it has been a very, very difficult time, I think, for Americans. And I, and I think that. Uh, hopefully it has brought more awareness uh, about uh, international issues and, and hopefully it has been brought more awareness about the Constitution uh, and exactly what it means and, and that, you know, Americans can rally around that and, and uh, hopefully this, you know, will never happen again.